So to begin things off, um, this is actually a first for me. I actually have my boss and my boss's boss in the back. Hey. <laughs> Please, heckle all day long. So just kind of some of the things that uh, Dan already said. You know, a lot of people know me as Metacortex. Others know me as Danny. Call me either or, don't care. I'm a senior security consultant at Secure Ideas. Uh, I'm also an 801 Labs founder and uh, board member, if I could spell that correctly, apparently. Oh, I think it ran into the image. Oops. Oh, well. Um, 801 Labs is the local hackerspace out here in Salt Lake City. Uh, DC 801, the local DEF CON group. I help uh, do a lot of stuff with them. And this is my third time speaking at B-Side Salt Lake. Now to kick it off, as a quick survey, who in this room has ever thought about or currently wants to be a pen tester? A lot of people. Why? It's open for discussion, yell stuff out. It is sexy. Get to break into things, fantastic. Job security, yes. It pays decent amount of money. <laughs> Reports. They're my favorite. That's very true. <laughs> so just some of the answers that I've heard from other people, and it looks like you guys answered most of them. You know, it's fun, sexy. You get paid to own companies or some kind of your mom joke, which I'm disappointed in all of you. But I can relate because for years, I set my goal as my career to start pen testing um, eight, nine years ago. And I'm only just getting to this point where I'm being able to do it professionally. Uh, most of my experience before getting this job was tons of VMs. I would load up VMs for everything I could. I didn't care if they were backdoored ISOs that I downloaded off some shady tracker. I was going to own them myself. Tons of Metasploit materials. I, anything that was said Metasploit on it, I was reading or watching. Tons of mailing lists, the security-focused stuff sometimes makes a lot of noise. Um, various different podcast mailing lists. Twitter, monitor Twitter a lot. It's very active medium in our community, in our industry. I would hop into every CTF I possibly could. I would compete to the best of my ability and you know, take a lot away at the end of it. And you know, most importantly, I would listen to everybody else. Everybody else's experiences, you know, penetrating networks, getting paid to do it, everything. I would I didn't care how boring it was, I was gonna listen to the story. But while I was doing all that, most of my time was spent in the blue team side of things, doing network engineering, firewall deployments, firewall configurations, support for those firewalls. Um, so yeah, so I can understand where a lot of people are coming from in wanting to get into this field. But real quick, we can go over kind of, I threw this together real quick, but it's my idea of security testing and different levels of testing in those. Um, everything in my experience has been building upon the lower levels. So you get good audits going if you're fairly you know, immature um, program for as far as security goes. You start auditing a lot of stuff um, and start fixing it depending on you know, what the audit says. And from there you can move into vulnerability scanning. Um, things like Nessus, um, OpenVAS, tons, tons of vulnerability scanners out there. They'll go out, scan the whole network, tell you what's there, what's not, and, and let you, you know, look at what are some of the higher severity things and uh, fix accordingly to try and just build the security in your company. Um, from there on top, we have penetration testing and red team, um, which I don't know why I'm going through all of that. I do have slides for those. So let's go on. Um, 
Security audit, yay, I mean, a lot of checkboxes. A lot of compliance, PCI, yay, that's the big one. Um, you get to you know, just evaluate tons of systems and configurations. And you just look at them and try and identify issues with them and keep going. Like I said, vulnerability scanning, it is um, mainly automated. You can put scanners in various different points of the network to you know, catch certain things. And uh, a lot of times you can put in credentials into those systems so it'll log in, tell you vulnerable software versions, all that. There's, like I said, there's a ton of vulnerability scanners. There's a good list there. And then what we get into is penetration testing, which is, I mean, the focus of this talk, which is basically you let people come in, find those vulnerabilities, exploit them to see what they can gain access to as far as um, critical business systems and how you know one you can leverage one exploit move it over to another vulnerability and keep moving through the network to find the most critical things in the business um, the the thing that penetration tests are limited on is generally scope and length of the engagement which gets me into red team which I see more as a pen penetration test with less scope and less time constraints. It's really all it is for the most part. So, so all right, we want to you know start penetration testing. You get tons of awesome tools everywhere. You know, Metasploit, Kane Enable, you know, anything in Kali. You, you know, tons of all these sexy exploits that you can run and do a lot of really cool stuff in. So great, you can grab all your stuff, all your tools, get them all ready, and just let loose. You know, I, I had to put a pony in here somewhere. There it is. So, we, you know, pwn all the things. Great, fantastic. But... Yeah. Hold on a minute. Because it's not all like that. So let's dispel some myths real quick. Um, I made this slide. It may make uh, Kevin in the back squeam a little bit. But it's funny, nonetheless. Give me a sec to read over it. So in a penetration test, like I said, we are limited on scope and time that we're able to actually run this assessment. Most of the times we're limited to five days, business hours, and we have to cover a lot of ground in that five days. Sometimes I've seen networks that I've had upwards of 50 class six teams that we've needed to scan. That's gonna take a long time. So we rely on a lot of automation. Nessus is great, I love it. You basically set up a scan, tell it to not do anything crazy that might knock over devices, say go. It's gonna map the entire network, give you a list of vulnerabilities it was able to find. It helps a lot, it's really noisy. We're not running in trying to be a ninja right off the bat, just because of that time constraint. So, you know, a lot of people I've heard have, have said a lot of negative things about, you know, pen testers going in and run vulnerability scans, which I think is unfair, um, just because of that time constraint. But, um, so we'll get into some of the tools that I use the most. You know, as you'll see up here, it's, it's not Metasploit. I've used it, I've used it a decent amount, but it's not my go-to right out of the box. You know, do a lot of Nessus scans, parsing through those. A um, lot of burp for web app stuff. That's de facto. Burp is amazing if you're looking at web apps. And honestly, sometimes I've spent a couple of hours just browsing around open network shares because there's a lot of good information in those. I have seen several times that passwords are stored in text files on an open share that anyone with domain credentials can get to. 
as well as personal identifiable information, such as identity cards for Canada, and a lot of scary stuff that you wouldn't want everybody to have. So another misconception that I've heard, I've heard a lot of stories, people, you know, they're like, fired up Metasploit, set my R hosts, this whole gigantic subnet range, typed in exploit and go. And all of a sudden, I'm getting back tons of shells. I'm owning the network every way possible. That doesn't happen a whole lot. It just doesn't. Um, honestly, it took me several engagements to find something vulnerable enough to actually get a shell. Um, why? Because a lot of our customers are really good at security. They hire us and they, they know a lot what they're doing to begin with. So, but I don't want to put you off, you know, don't want to say it's boring or anything. There are times that I feel you feel like Luigi. And to get this reference, go back and play Mario Party 2 for the Nintendo 64. If you're playing single player and you put all four other characters on easy mode, you can set the controller down and walk away. You will win every single mini game that game will throw at you. And if I can find my mouse on here, I will show some proof of that. There's, this is long, there are a lot of videos. I'm gonna skip ahead to another, I think this is the other good one. <laughs> you know, I feel like Luigi when I find, you know, Microsoft SQL running as system administrator with a password of nothing. Or the one on the exact ne IP next to it, SA password, password. It makes it really easy. You just have to show up and you basically own a network. That doesn't happen very often though. So let's go into, uh, real quick, some things that I do not like about pen testing. My boss's boss is one of them. Um, fully external penetration tests with no social engineering. They will, you know, that's classic example of destroying a scope. Like, it won't let you do a whole lot because, you know, firewalls work. What do you, what do you want? <laughs> Which leads into my other one, scope. Scope will kill you and limit you to what you can do. There's been a couple times I've seen, you know, hey, this system over here is vulnerable, just basically using, using the application, let's say a web application, and it's relying on another component that I can tell is vulnerable, but it, it's not part of scope. I can't touch that system actively or do anything like that. So that's gonna you know, hinder the test a little bit. You know, which is fine if that's what the customer's looking for, you know, or they're looking to test one specific application, that's fine. But it's, it can't go unmentioned, so I like to you know, mention that to them. And how we mention it to them is the next part that I don't like about pen testing, which is the reporting. <laughs> Reporting sucks. There have been times where my boss and my boss's boss in the back have asked me to bang out a 45 page report in two or three days. It sucks. It's not a lot of fun. It, it ends up with me sitting in my apartment for eight 
10 hours compiling a bunch of content in a Word document. And that's my day, and that sometimes tends to be my night. Um, not fantastic. But there, I mean, all the negatives are offset by the things that I love about it. It's fantastic. I get to do things that I wouldn't legally be able to do. How fun is that? Woo. <laughs> you know, I don't want to go to jail. I wouldn't fare very well. <laughs> I, I am, I'm not a fighter. <laughs> I will not dignify a response to that. <laughs> I love getting passwords for admins who are logged into the systems. Like, it's incredible. I've seen passwords that you probably shouldn't be using as passwords in your corporate environment. And I have had to ping a coworker before and be like, they asked us to publish all the passwords we found. That might get him fired. What do we do? So we ended up, you know, redacting most of it, to, you know, to be nice guys, but I know that admin saw that report, and I know he knows that we saw that password, which just makes me smile. <laughs> um, another thing I like, I've gotten into companies' phone systems, because they were recording every call in and out of every phone and storing it in a central server for the past six years. That's fun being able to listen to conference calls about promotions that they're going to give out to their customers coming up here pretty soon. You have handy things to know. Um, gaining access to personal identifiable information. That's always fun. Um, again, like I said, passwords on clear text, or clear text passwords stored on open shares. That's one of my favorites. But most importantly, the, the best thing that I really love about this job and everything I'm able to do is be the baseball bat. Companies hire us sometimes knowing they're vulnerable to a lot of things, and they want the report to prove it to upper management. We get to come in and, and be that weapon for change in that company. It's an incredible feeling to hear the guys say, this is going to give me so much am ammunition to get everything changed in our environment. Can't get much better than that because I mean, you are the catalyst for that change to make people more secure. So, I mean, that's pretty much the, the biggest takeaway that I have from this job. Um, what about you guys? Everybody that wants to get into this industry, wants to start doing this professionally, you, you have to commit to it. I mean, I was hanging around the industry for, you know, monitoring, participating for eight, nine years, you know, before I even felt I was ready to do this. It's a big commitment. You have to know what you're doing before you can let loose all these hacker tools in somebody's environment because it'll knock a lot of stuff over and cause outages if you're not careful. Um, it's, it's a way of life. You need to stay up to date. If you're not monitoring feeds and everything, you're going to be way left behind and you're going to start getting worse at what you're doing. It's something that it's, it's a lifelong commitment. You have to Keep doing it for as long as you want a job doing it. And then one of my biggest ones is the community. Like this local community has done leaps and bounds for me personally than I would have ever imagined. It has made some of the most key connections for me to learn the things that I need to, ping the people that are this incredible at said subject, and they're way open about it and teach me everything that they know. And just that collaboration is incredible and invaluable, in my opinion. I know many people that have gotten jobs 
through coming to the hackerspace and hanging out and talking to people. Like, it's that's the way you want to do it. Um, so I'm ending really quick. I got through those slides a lot quicker than I thought I would. But that'll give everybody a break to uh, go see some of the other stuff that's going on. Here's my contact information. You know, I'm on Twitter. I'm somewhat active on it. Uh, my email for you know non-work stuff. Feel free to ping me about anything you want, anytime. I will respond. Or if you want to talk work stuff, you know, Danny at secureideas.com. Other than that, I think I'm done.